Hello, welcome back to the Tylo Chapel on this eighth Sunday after Trinity, the 2nd of August. As we meet to share what God offers, offers us today, we rejoice that we can experience it together. Wherever we are, we know that God is with us and has promised to be with us always. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We prepare for our worship with moments of reflection and words of confession. God provides for us, but we often forget and try to provide for ourselves, becoming so preoccupied that we are out of God's reach. When we believe that we cannot rely on God for our needs, Lord have mercy. When we have forgotten to include others in our walk with God, Christ have mercy. When worry about material needs prevents us from hearing God's saving word, Lord have mercy. May God forgive us our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness and surround us with his peace and his love now and always. Today's collect. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, we beseech you to direct, sanctify and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that through your most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. We'll be reflecting on our gospel reading, but in all our readings today, 
The, in the first reading, God invites everyone who thirsts to come to the waters and those with no money to share wine and milk for free. God promises an everlasting covenant with David in that reading from Isaiah. And in the Epistle to the Romans, St. Paul laments for his Jewish kindred to whom belongs God's covenant, longing for them to believe. Paul wishes he were cut off from Christ for their sake. And so to our gospel, in which Jesus withdraws from the crowd in a boat, but the 5,000 people, together with men, women and children, they follow him on foot. And Jesus provides for all their needs, healing the sick and feeding them miraculously with loaves and fishes. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. When Jesus heard that Herod had beheaded John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. He said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowd to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. They took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. Those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. He had compassion for them and cured their sick, says St. Matthew. Many people this summer will be lamenting the, the way in which they can no longer attend great music festivals number of people here at the cathedral will by now, would by now have been to Glyndebourne, to the opera, and various others. Others might have been to all sorts of music festivals, Glastonbury and others. At Glyndebourne, for example, uh, you are expected to take an elaborate picnic and to dress in your finest clothes. Plastic cups and paper plates simply won't do. The picnic basket, preferably of the beautiful wicker variety, must contain china plates, glasses and proper cutlery. You need chairs and table, and rather like the French when they picnic, a proper tablecloth. If you don't want to pay for a space in one of the sheltered areas, you can only hope for good weather, since gazebos are not permitted. You're advised to find your space before the concert begins to ensure that everything is ready for the interval. If such complicated and time-consuming organisation is too much, you can hire your picnic equipment, buy your picnic food on site, and arrange for a porter to help with it all. And if Glyndebourne isn't your thing, then you might prefer Glastonbury or one of the other festivals, Green Belt, the Green Man. Then you need a tent, a sleeping bag, and if you want to avoid having to pay festival prices, you need your food for the weekend. The preparations are every bit as complicated, no matter which festival you go to. You must have the right festival gear, whether it's wellies and waterproofs, or tuxedo and long ball gown. In countries where rain is unlikely, then you need protection against the sun. Without the right preparations, that's the point, we worry that we won't have a good time, that the experience will be less than it should be. In today's gospel, the crowds are not unlike those at a modern day music event, except they have made no preparations. Carried away by the charismatic teaching they've heard, they want to hear more. Following Jesus into the desert, they interrupt the time he has tried to carve out for himself and after hearing that John the Baptist has been killed by Herod, Jesus wanting, as it were, 
some time alone, is now disturbed. We might expect him in his grief to turn the crowds away so he can deal with the terrible news. But unlike many contemporary superstars, he has no sense of entitlement. He feels nothing but compassion for the people who follow him. When the disciples point out the practical considerations of such a large number of people in a deserted place, they have no food. Jesus sees no problem. You give them something to eat, he tells them. The disciples have nothing. But using someone's five loaves and two fishes, he makes sure that there is more than enough for everyone so the crowd can continue to hear the message. So much goes into preparing for a great festival, a music event, that a casual observer might conclude that the music is secondary. If we get the picnic wrong or fail to bring enough cutlery, Glyndebourne could be ruined. If we, if we forget our wellies and it rains, then Glastonbury is a mud bath and a disaster. We forget that the music will still be the same. Inspiring, emotional, exciting, maybe sublime. And we're in great company. It's never all about the food or the tent. Jesus' followers didn't think of making preparations for the desert. But Jesus not only fulfilled their spiritual and healing needs, he also provided physical sustenance, which they hadn't thought to bring. The result must have been like a big party, where the people could enjoy a miraculous meal together, get to know one another and exchange their experiences of the things that Jesus said and did. Shared experiences can all often be the best. And Jesus created one from nothing, without planning or effort. When we least expect it, when we make no preparations and come with no expectations other than a desire to encounter God, we can discover the same unexpected, life-giving transformation. Creating life from nothing is, after all, God's speciality. The music of life would be great, the friendship wonderful, when we are unencumbered by the baggage that so often weighs us down, or by the elaborate preparations we feel we need to make in order to have a good time. It might be wise to pack a sandwich, but we probably should travel light. For God takes care of all our needs, and essential though it is, the food is just part of the whole story.
And so let us bring the, the needs of the church and the world before our loving God. We remember that our needs are many and varied, but God's desire is to meet them all. Father, we give you thanks and praise for the blessings, spiritual and material, that you bestow upon us and for the people with whom we share them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who do not want to follow Christ to the other side of the lake, believing that they need nothing from him. For them, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who struggle to provide food for themselves and their families, for whom a celebratory meal is beyond their means. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who walk alone, missing out on the life-giving joy that comes from sharing God's blessings with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, receive our prayers and make us receptive to your response, sharing our joy with your people everywhere. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we pray together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Ein tard, ar honoit an anevoith, sanctaithia de enu, dele de dairnas, gnele de oallis, megis an anev. Felly ar y ddau a hefyd, da rwy ni heddiw ein barabain oddio, a ma ddau ni a'n dyledion, fel y ma ddau yn dyna i'n dyledwyr, ac nac ar rwy ni brofid i gaeth, a eithau gwarid ni rhag drwg, can es aeddo ti yw'r dainas, fel gallu a gogoniant, a nois hoesoedd. Amen. May God give you grace to follow Christ to the other side of the lake, trusting in him to provide all you need. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.